Minions, have you ever played an RPG and one player at every opportune moment for them brings up some ridiculous plan to solve whatever the problem is at that point in time? Like, oh look, we have a problem, there's no bridge here. And they're like, aha, I'll use my BS to summon an airplane from the sky and bring it down to create our bridge. That'll do it. No, no that won't do it. It'll never do it. That is such a ridiculous plan, it will never work. Why do you keep bringing this up? <sighs> Anyhow, that's exactly like the player in today's story thinks. So let's swell for initiative and get right on into it. Me, the main character of this story, playing an Oathbreaker Paladin, she was kicked from her order for her enjoyment of electronic roleplay. This is important to the story, regrettably. Rice, another player, and my close friend. I call him this because it makes him really mad. Playing a paladin who shared a backstory with my paladin, her half-sister, a more straightforward-laced paladin, who wanted to coax me back into the order. Doug, the DM of the story, he was a, if it doesn't derail the campaign, I'll allow it, kind of DM. To zit de zone, but I don't consider myself a fan of that style. Moog, the primary antagonist of this story. Playing an assassin rogue, playing the whole steals items and also hearts routine for his character. Melania, the secondary antagonist of this story, her and Moog hated one another for some reason. She played a ranger whose personality was the same as Melania's. Session 1 starts with all of us meeting in a town under attack by bandits. Really easy encounter, yeah? Run in, hit it till it dies, and Moog. Is there a cart around? Doug, be more specific. Moog. <laughs> a horse-drawn cart. You know, for carrying stuff. Rice, what's your plan? Moog, I'll send the cart at the bandits and scatter them. Doug ruled that there was a horse-drawn cart nearby and allowed Moog to send it at the bandits. However, since something like that is really ducking loud, Doug said the bandits were able to see and avoid getting run over. Moog. Gosh darn it. Whatever. Combat continues as normal, with Moog a bit salty the plan didn't work. Now, I get being annoyed that a plan didn't work, but he sighed in annoyance every time someone rolled a dice in that combat. We finished up without issue, and the town thanks us for our contributions. A lucky persuasion roll later, the mayor's daughter decides to thank me personally. One fade to black later, a joke from Rice out of character about it, and some in-character disgust, the session ended. After this, Melania DMs me and Rice about Moog. She rants for a bit about how Moog always pulls this stuff. He always tries to find the magical way to instantly solve combat, and whines and mopes when his solution doesn't result in an insta-win. After this, the sessions go twice a week. There's combat, Moog tries to solve it, and Melania tries to actively sabotage his attempts to do it. This makes Moog more pissy, and sometimes puts the party in active danger from these two trying to duck around too much. And I continue my streak of fades to black. Moog tries to as well, but the highest he rolled on Charisma was a 7, so it never went the way he wanted. After session 5, Moog DM'd me. Moog. Hey, uh, Doug was saying the way you tried to seduce every girl was making him hyper uncomfortable. Cut it out or you'll be kicked. I hadn't tried to do the do with every girl there, but I understand maybe I was overdoing it a bit. I figured I'd stop and then apologize to him after the next session. Session time comes and we play. We're back in the starting town, and Doug makes a point of the mayor's daughter coming to see us. Well, me, again. Moog. I try to seduce her. Doug. Roll with disadvantage. Moog. Why disadvantage? Doug. She fancies someone else. Moog rolls to seduce. His first roll in 18. Moog, haha, <laughs> get ready kids, time for a nat 20. A bit of typing later and the dice bot rolls. The result? A natural one. I smile. Rice chuckles a bit. Rice, <laughs> nat 20, eh? 
Moog glares at Rice for a moment, but it's interrupted by Melania howling with laughter. We can hear her losing her crap, cackling like an absolute mad woman. It gets awkward and Doug very abruptly ends the session about 90 minutes early. After a few hours, I DM him. Me. Hey Doug, uh, sorry if I made you uncomfortable with that whole seducing thing. I'll stop. Doug, what are you talking about? I was about to set up a whole subplot with you and the mayor's daughter. I'm fine with it. Just don't try to do anything out of FTB. Me. Okay, thanks. I was a bit confused, but didn't bring it up any further. The sessions go for a bit longer, but with Moog quite a bit more sour, and Melania very eager to mess with him. Moog keeps explicitly trying to seduce the mayor's daughter whenever she's around, making me more and more frustrated. Eventually, it reaches a boiling point. He attempts to seduce her again. Rolls a 19. Doug. She shuffles awkwardly and thanks you for your compliment, but says her heart belongs to another. Moog. <laughs> what the duck, man? <laughs> I rolled a 19. That should be enough. He said this while laughing, but I could tell there was some malice behind his words. I heard Rice start to speak. Maybe to tell him to back off, but Melania interrupted him. Melania. I punch him in the balls! Doug, what the fu- Moog. I roll to stab her with my rapier! Doug. No, you Melania. I cast Earthen Grasp on him! They're getting louder and louder each time, not even rolling anything just screaming at each other more and more. I start to tune it out, but I get snapped back by the sound of a call disconnection, and the yelling stopped. I looked, and Moog and Melania aren't in the server anymore. Doug. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, they're friends of mine. I never figured that would happen. The sessions go on hold as Doug tries to find replacements for the two of them. Eventually, I wake up to find the server deleted, with an apology message from Doug. End post. Okay, so I think the biggest problem here was Doug not realizing that his two friends kind of despise each other, and that bringing them into the same D&D campaign was not going to go so well. You know, they may act relatively civil in person, but D&D and tabletop RPGs in general can do things to people. Especially when one of them just wants to concoct some crazy plans and they never work. I mean, like, ever. Like, they don't seem like they ever worked here at all. Which understandably made him salty, but, I mean, the problem is trying to do some ridiculous plans like that. But I digress. This situation would have never happened if these two players were just vetted for by the DM who was their friend before they joined the game. Now, being that OP was not the DM, what could they have done? Well, when Moog tried to put words in Doug's mouth and effectively lied about it, first thing I would have done is clarified with Doug if that's what he really said. And this is in relation to the whole flirting thing and Fade to Black stuff. And if Doug confirmed way earlier in the story that Moog was lying about that, the issue could have been addressed then, instead of having a blowout at the very end. Beyond that, though, I don't think that there's much else that the OP could have done here. Really, the issue was on his DM for bringing two people that obviously despise each other into the same game. That was not going to go well. Anyhow, that wraps it up for this story. Now, I'm still working on it, but if you like what you see in my inn with all of the various Patreon players and other YouTubers, head over to my Patreon and any of the tiers there will get you into the inn. And the higher the tier, the more fancy stuff will happen with your character. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button to be notified of my future videos. And while you wait for my future videos, here are a few related videos of mine that you can watch while you wait.